thought I was reading an article and it was literally just a paragraph that talked about a person named Joe Moscow Moskowitz. He wants to spread the insurance across everybody. I love this idea. And I want to talk about how that's not going to work, unfortunately, although it would be amazing if we could do something like that. But I had to look him up because I had no idea who he was. Um, apparently, he's a congressman. Shoot me in the comments below. I am anti-politic knowledge because I'm just, it just doesn't stick in my brain. You say, oh, Democrat, oh, and I'm like, I've heard that a thousand times and I can't get my mind to wrap around what exactly that definition is. Like, okay, I get someone takes money and pays the other person. Let's dive in and explain how that would work and unfortunately why it probably won't work. Actually, to be honest with you, most companies already do this. So when you buy the risk, let's use a cell phone for example. When you buy one cell phone, the initial plan of insurance, or at least the pure way of doing insurance is, okay, you have a cell phone, it's a thousand dollar cell phone, and you pay $10 a month for insurance on that phone. If you break that phone, we're going to replace it. If there's multiple people, thousands of people buying that insurance, I'm getting tens of thousands of dollars per month. And I know 30% of them break their phone every month. So I'm going to pay out 30 or 300,000, but I'm going to take in 500,000. That allows me to build a reserve, that allows me to pay employees, that allows me to build this engine that is a business. And there's supposed to be a five to 10, sometimes a 20% profit margin, which in the food industry is nothing. That's too low. You couldn't survive in the auto industry. That's not enough unless there's repairs. So in insurance, because there's no physical product being pushed out, it's doable. So in this case, we can make those. Now I get it. There's a lot of companies out there that can make the 50% or you feel like they're making 300% profit on you, but you got to remember they're spreading the risk. Let's use homes, for example, the roofs, whenever contractors decide, oh, we want more business. We're going to go into all of these neighborhoods where there could be hail damage and we're just going to claim them all. That's one of the problems they've been having is because of there's more natural disasters. It's not planned correctly. And if everybody started dropping their phone and now there's 50% of you can't pay it, there's not enough income to pay out those pieces. That's why insurance rates fluctuate. So there's a law or at least a rule in insurance. When you take the test, you have to know this. There's something called the law of large numbers. And what that tells you is the more people that you insure, the more accurate your numbers become. That was the case. And the reason that you're seeing insurance to go crazy, yeah, inflation, car prices are higher, all of those things have added up, but more so than not, California has had way more wildfires than they should have. Texas, had freezing rain and tons of people crashed. Then they had a flood a few months after that. And now they had another flood. And what shouldn't happen in Texas, the water doesn't typically go there, is happening. South Carolina, the hit North Carolina, just devastation with tons of hurricanes, not tons, but a hurricane and a lot of weather related disasters that weren't planned for because it's all technology, right? They have these technology predictive models, which are, have been great for decades. All of a sudden we're wrong. And what they planned on happening didn't happen correctly. That means that insurance companies are taking some of those risks. Yes, you and I in Michigan and in Ohio and in Virginia, where our rates are actually pretty competitive, at least in my agency, they're awesome. We are paying for disasters in Florida in California, in Texas, now South Carolina's disasters, all of the hurricanes and all of the weathers, all of the wildfires in, in these states are impacting what we pay because on the bottom line, insurance companies do level off what their profits are. Now that's not a hundred percent accurate because yes, we do to a point, we still have our issues to inflation and cost repairs and time to fix. All of the things have increased in our states and pretty much every state there is. So if you haven't seen a 20% increase, it's, it's coming. If you haven't seen a 30 to 50% increase, it may hit you. And that might be because of those other states. So if that's the case, the way to fix that, if you're looking for an answer is you can shop with multiple or an independent agent that can shop different companies. 
State Farm, for example, was heavy in California. Allstate used to be heavy in California, but if you watch the recent report that the CEO of Allstate had said, doesn't matter. We just backed out of California or we slowed the policies that we write there. We can still make a profit. We just can't write that state. So cutting off those states, although they're fighting to keep you in that state, there's just not enough profit there. Kind of smart companies, but not so great in the news because they just cut off an arm, right? <laughs> my, my arm had a gangrene and I just, it's gone, right? It was killing us, so we took it off. Well, we'll put it back on. <laughs> that's kind of weird. I guess that's a weird way to do it, but we'll put it back on when the predictive models come back better and the state lets us do more changes. So there's a lot of things happening in the background. The reason I really love this idea is I really do wish there was one number. We could just average everybody across the US. We could average car insurance. We could average home insurance. I get it, every model's worth more or less. Some cars have more uh, accidents. Some cars are less liability. You as a driver, not changing your tires when you should have creates a higher risk because if the tire pops or blows out, now you've caused an accident, right? You may have killed someone on the highway because of negligence, right? So there's a lot of these things, but if there was a way to wrap that all into one, all the repairs, all of the mechanical issues, maybe your cars, unfortunately, the Teslas are gonna tell you when you can and can't drive. So we're giving up a little bit of control here, which is why it probably will never become a thing. On top of it, some of us have really good rates on insurance. And the reason some of us do, not me, I'm an okay driver, but that some of us do is because we have companies that are better fits for us. We've taken the time to one, understand the coverage that we need. So we've got it dialed in. I need a half million for this. I need 200 for this. I need this, that, and this. And I'll link a video at the end that goes over it. And I'm prepared for that claim. I know that those are the coverages I need. So which of these companies are going to be the best fit? So I found the fit for me as an agent or as a customer that fits the coverage level that I need to have. That being said, I've got a good driver discount because I did a telematics. I let them watch me drive. Okay. I've got a home and auto discount and an umbrella discount in case I get sued. So I've got all of these things protecting me, which give me all of these discounts. And I had the alumni discount. There's all of these pieces that once I knew the coverage, I found the better fit company. I could apply most of these discounts. I have a better deal than that person that just went online and shopped. Yeah. They may have a cheaper price initially because they wanted the cheapest deal but it finds a way to get back up because the risks change and that type of company isn't necessarily a fit for certain people. That being said, these companies, that ones that you are gonna go with that are the better fit, most of them don't affect you because they cut off the arm. If California is the bad state, guess what? If I was in California, I'm not a fit for that company. So they let that go. I move over to a company that is a better fit and I start over. Hopefully this makes sense. I wanted to talk about that because it was a one paragraph saying that he wants to standardize it. And I do agree with him. I would love to see the mappings of that. I'd love to share it with you guys, but I don't see it possible because I've also seen a lot of companies, root insurance, lemonade insurance, a lot of the technical or really just tech insurance companies, but they tried to come in and like I said in the beginning, it's a pure idea of the way insurance should work. And what they did is they took all of the excess money and started paying it to funds. You could pick like a adopt me dog fund where they're, instead of paying the CEO more, it went to the fund, right? Well, that didn't work because what happened was their rates were good, really, really good. The law of large numbers didn't affect them yet. So they just thought the prices should be this and they did their numbers and all that. but. Before they knew it, they had to raise the rates because guess what happens when rates are too good? People that shouldn't join the company that aren't a fit for that company, they pile into their claims, 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 claims. 50% of our cell phones are being dropped. They're claiming them anyways. There's a lot of fraud. Now they're fighting and just paying the bills ends up becoming almost impossible to where they have to go get more money. They've done three, four, five seeds of getting funds for these companies and they're just not making the profit that they want because of what's become pure has essentially broken down because not necessarily that people are bad, it's more the people just want that deal and they think they're that best fit and it just comes in too large 
too quickly. When you do that, you got to be a little bit careful. Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts? Do you think this is possible? Do you see a way that we could levelize the same price for house insurance? Maybe do it separately for car insurance or combine them, home and auto. Or maybe we make it so everything is one number. It might be $1,000 a month. You pay for a car, you get a house to your fitting or your price range, you get insurance built into it, you don't have to think about it. If you have a claim, don't think twice. You just go out and you get the next car or you put it in the shop and you get a rental car. It's part of that policy where you know you're paying equally to what your neighbors should be paying. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I'm Mark with Think Insurance. I'll see you in the next one.